And welcome back, everybody. We're chatting with Hugo Delgado of Hosanna in Excelsis, talking about difficult passages. And uh, right before the break, we brought up, uh, or you brought up Matthew 18, where uh, it's the reconciliation of the sinner, that if you try to reconcile with your brother, that fails, you take two or three others, They that fails, then tell to the church. And if they won't listen to the church, then they should be treated as a heathen or a tax collector. And I imagine, yeah, that would be difficult to uh, apply in real life, you know, practice in real life uh, within Protestantism. Right, because you can decide to leave your church if you are being disciplined, which is exactly what was happening in that situation in your MacArthur's case. And, you know, if someone, I mean, he, he was, uh, he, he, was uh, he uh, took one member out and that was going through a very big crisis. And that person just went and found like another church. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, if that's the case, then, uh, I mean, let me tell you, Gary, but like Jesus' words seem, seem like a really, a little bit silly, right? Like if, if you can do that so easily, I mean, well, what's the point of the passage then? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So so the church has to be an authority and the church has to be able to decide who's, 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 who's part of the church and who's not. But you can do that if you have a thousand churches, Right. Yeah. And, and, and each one of them follows like a different doctrine and different disciplines and stuff. So I think this one, if you apply it in the context, it's going to be a powerful, it, it, it is a powerful uh, passage, you know, uh, against, or what I would say, like it, it makes Protestantism looks like really difficult to fit into it. And I think that's, that, that's the reason we were brought up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this that was actually a very important passage for uh, my friend El Cresta. When he was a Protestant minister, uh, there was someone who wanted to be a deacon in the church, and uh, it came to light that he was having an affair. And so basically he was reprimanded and told to to stop it. Otherwise, he can't become a deacon. And basically uh, El kind of kicked him out of his church, and he finds out a little while later that he just went down the road to another church and became a deacon there with no problem. And El contacted the pastor, said, you know, this is the reason why we uh, wouldn't allow him to become a deacon here. And the pastor's like, well, you know, we're fine with that. That's, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, how how, so that, how, that how can that big... fit with Matthew 18 then? <laughs> you know? Exactly. It's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, so yeah, that was that was the second one, and my friend said, like, yeah, I mean, like, the, the, you know, it's just it's just very very difficult. But now, I will move to John twenty twenty three, right? We're talking, I mean, uh, we're talking about ecclesiology in this case, but this one I was not aware, Gary. I, I mean, I had like this intuition, uh, but being in that, uh, you know. Uh, program with my friend him being a protestant when when we talk about it he said like i mean that passage really never made any sense to me john 20 23 says the following if you forgive the sins of any referring to the apostles their sins have been forgiven and the word apuntai there is the same word that we use in the our father right like our father how are you are in heaven so when we say like forgive us our trespasses we're using that word forgive is the same word him so if you forget the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. So my friend said, like, yeah, that passage was just like absolutely like I, I couldn't. I, I never found a way to, to get out of it. And, and, you know, he said he mentioned something that was very interesting. He said, like, I went to look at all these uh, Bible commentary and there was like not even one with any reasonable, um, you know, interpretation of that. Even uh, if you look at the uh, the the Gospel of John, this commentary of D.A. Carson, I think, he said, like, yeah, you know, that means that, you know, Jesus sends, like, people to the Word, and, and, you know, like, they will, by bringing the Word, they will be forgiven. But that's not exactly what the passage is saying. I mean, it's saying, like, any, that it's giving some specific power and authority to the, to the apostles to go and really do what only God can do, and is forgive sins, right? So, so that is... Uh, very problematic from what I've seen, and the more I discuss this with other parts, and I see that they just they, they just don't have any any good uh, way out of it. I don't know what is your experience on that, yeah, Gary. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I found that there's usually two responses. One is either they try to tie it into the Great Commission, right? Exactly. So it's the proclamation yeah. that your sins are going to be forgiven, right? Or uh, some will try to use the New American Standard Bible. 
and say that uh, that the sins have already been forgiven and what the apostles are doing are just saying, let, letting them know that fact that it has already been forgiven by faith, which actually destroys the Greek on the passage. Cause yeah, exactly. That. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that one, that was one, a uh, very interesting one. And then we started moving into some other, like, you know, kind of standalone problematic passages. And we move a little bit more into the, 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 the sacrifice of the mass and the Eucharist. But I always like to start with uh, Colossians 1.24. We said, like, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I do share on behalf of his body, again, which is the church, church. in filling up what is lacking in Christ's affliction. So the question is, like, is Jesus lacking anything? I don't we suppose, I mean, like, in our discussion with Protestants, they say, like, well, Jesus did everything for us, you know, the work, his work, salvation is complete. But it seems to me, when you read this passage, that there is something lacking, right? And, you know, Paul is using that word lacking there. And he is suffering in his flesh on uh, on Christ's behalf. So here, that is a very problematic when you have some of, when you, when you make those, some of the claims that you do as a Protestant. Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, I know that has been a perennial problem. Uh, perennial, Protestant, perennial, uh, yeah. After my, yeah, yeah. Uh, because it somehow insinuates that we we have a role, you know, yeah, and sharing in Christ's redemption, which right. is way beyond just you know a declaration that we're just and that's pretty much it. Yeah, and you know, you know, Gary, I can identify when when this is a very problematic passage when you see a Protestant scholar, and and when they use these words, you know, when they take a passage and say like, well, you, you shouldn't read it or interpret the way. Or, or interpret the, 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 the you know, like um, little of the passage and they start explaining it away, right. right? And I noticed that in Michael Heiser, which is, uh, you know, we're recognized, um, all, I mean, he's a, he's a Bible scholar, mostly focused on, on the Old Testament, but he's got like very, very popular podcast uh, called The Naked Bible Podcast, which I sometimes I, I, I like to listen to him. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good scholar. But when he was like reading these uh, Colossians 1.24, he was like, hey, no, no, I mean, like, you cannot interpret the way you are interpreting, right? Like, the way, like, the, as, as you were doing, which is, like, pretty much the little interpretation and reading of the passage. He's like, no, we cannot, we cannot believe that. And when you do that, when I see a Protestant doing that, then I'm like, okay, this is a very problematic passage. And I could see that happening with uh, such a scholar like him. Yeah, yeah. It's when they say that it can't mean what it so clearly seems. Exactly, to yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> know, that, that's definitely that's a trouble. red flag. Yeah. That means trouble. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I, I noticed that, and I asked my friend, like, when you were a Protestant, what, what did you do with this passage? And he said, like, nothing. I just, I just ignored it. <laughs> you know, like that's yeah. that's pretty yeah, much. What can it. you do? 